Thank you very much. Uh, before I get started and dive in, I just want to apologize for my carbon footprint, income inequality, uh, my white privilege, and just being a man in general. I just thought I'd apologize. <laughs> Apparently, my demographic is responsible for every problem in the world today, so let me just apologize for everything. I'm sorry for the high cost of health care, uh, global warming, and that AK-47s are legal, but in California, plastic straws are not. I'm sorry <laughs> for hurricanes, bad hair day, and the last half of every Saturday Night Live. Ladies, I'm sorry for so much. I'm sorry for the pain of childbirth and that society pressures you into shaving and waxing everything, which I enjoy, which makes me a hypocrite, so I'm sorry for that. So I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and, and let me just say, oh, well, okay, we'll wait. Okay. White guys, time's up. Sorry. Uh, you, you had a good, a good run, but uh, your dynasty has been supplanted by diversity, so sorry. So if anything's ever bothered you in your life or ever is going to bother you in the future, let me just say I'm sorry for all of it. And now that, that move, can we move on? Are we good? Can we move? All right, here we go. It may surprise you to know that the number one question people ask comedians is where do we get our material? And I've got to tell you, we don't usually make stuff up. Things just happen to us that don't happen to doctors and lawyers. I'll give you an example. I was at a big convention. I was sleeping with another comic. All right, no, wait. Nope, that came out wrong. Okay. Um, I was sharing a consensual space with another cisgendered male. Okay, there. You got to be careful nowadays. Anyway, so he's a road comic, and he can't sleep unless the TV and the lights are on. He also has a sleep apnea machine which is great if you like sleeping next to Darth Vader. It's like... <laughs> so I've got earplugs, so, you know, I think I'm okay, but I like to sleep in the dark. It's a quirk. So I put a pillow over my head, but I like to breathe. That's another quirk. <laughs> and I'm lying back, what am I going to do? And, and I realize I don't have a sleep mask, but I do have clean underwear. So... <laughs> all right, a few of you are ahead of me. Very good. All right, so... I, put, I get up and I put on a pair like a mask and it's got two ear holes and a convenient opening for my nose. Okay, now you're all on board, all right. I'm lying back in bed and I feel like a superhero. I, I'm tidy whitey man right now. This is, I'm, and I'm waiting for my sidekick boxer boy and we'll go fight our nemesis granny panty. So I'm, I'm just about to fall asleep and I think to myself, what if I die like this? How are they gonna explain this to my wife? <laughs> Mrs. Lee, we found your husband in the hotel room of another man with underwear on his head. No, no eulogy can make that sound good. So, I get up and I write a note and I put it on the pillow next to me. If found dead, please remove underwear. <laughs> I'm just about to fall asleep and I realize, gotta write another note. So I write another one. The top ones, you cannot be too careful. So I put that there. So. I wake up the next morning to the sound of laughter and the other comedians on the bed and ask if I'm a dyslexic dresser. And it turns out he's taken pictures of me and he's posted them, yes, on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. Which sounds bad, but I got an endorsement deal from Fruit of the Loom, so it's great. <laughs> Who knew at this age I'd be an underwear model, you know? And that's how we get our material. It's so simple. Now, before I close tonight, I do want to address the elephant in the room and tell you that while I may look like the ghost of Christmas future, I identify as an athletic 17-year-old testosterone god. <laughs> My pronouns are yo, sup, and <laughs> And you may think that's culturally insensitive, but whatever. So here's my advice to you youthists. Don't cast old people aside. Realize that we're signposts along the way of your life showing you what will happen to you eventually. And pay attention because it's going to happen to you. Young people realize that anytime you walk by any old person, within the last week, at some point, something on them stopped working for no reason. <laughs> you try and find a safe space for that. My wife and I were out walking. All of a sudden, my thigh started to hurt. It's like my thigh... Did I pull a thigh? Do I need a thiectomy? What's happening here? I like, and I'm falling apart, but do I get any robocalls asking to extend my warranty? No. Here's my point. We all went through puberty at the same time. 
But old age is different for every single person. You're like a car, and you don't know what part's going to go first. You get out of bed, and for no reason, your fender just falls off. And, and you find that you're leaking fluid. And, and, and one blinker is on the fritz, and, you're, and your shoulder is out of alignment, and you've got a, a spare tire, and your seat is sagging, and your suspension is gone, and your muffler must be shot because you're backfiring way more than you ever did. Every time I get out of bed, I sound like I'm a Model T starting up. <laughs> but on the good news, no matter where I go, I never run out of gas. That's it for me. Thank you so much. That was great, Robert. You know, I got to tell you, you're the only comic I know that would have the courage to tell a joke about wearing underwear over your face and then having a backfire. And somehow, we're supposed to believe, let's pray. That was a different pair. I just yeah. hope it was. <laughs> I think it was. I think, I think it was. <laughs> so glad to have you here. Robert G. Lee, everybody. Here is his book, What's the Big Idea? And if you want to see more of his comedy, plus talk about this book, you can get it all about how to understand God, and it's pretty simple. And uh, here's how you get it. Go to Huckabee.tv, and when you go there, we have a link to everything about Robert G. Lee.